Lucy. I've got my beautiful bonus daughter here for spring break this week, so thank you for helping out with the tunes. All right, let's see. We've got, oh, Lauren's here. You made it. Yay. Hi. So good to see you and welcome. Um, so for those of you who are just joining, Again, welcome to my kitchen and thank you for having me in your kitchen. Hopefully we are cooking together. <laughs> so we're making what I call the magical kale salad. It just might change your life. And this amazing miso dressing. So first things first, we are going to make the dressing so we have a few moments for it to marinate so it tastes just that much better once we put it in the salad. So, first things first, if you've got a blender or a food processor, that will be your best bet. I'm going to use my Vitamix. As a lot of you know, I'm hashtag obsessed with my Vitamix, and no, they don't sponsor me. Uh, actually, speaking of that, Mother's Day is right around the corner, so, you know, I'm going to try to be a good mama bear and and see if maybe the, the Mama Day, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus brings me the stainless steel carafe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, see, uh, we'll see how it goes. And you know, as always, I will keep you posted. So grab your blender bowl and or your food processor. And if you want to follow along with the ingredients, you can go to michellefox.com forward slash events. And I have the ingredients for the dressing there. Or, and, if you want to see the ingredients and recipe for the kale salad, you can go to michellefox.com forward slash events and then scroll down to the, actually today. <laughs> there you go. I got you. I got all my friends taken care of. Just go to my page. You'll find what you need. So, with our dressing in the bowl, we are going to put two tablespoons of miso and I put that it's optional because it's optional like the rest of the ingredients in this dressing are still gonna taste amazing so if you don't have miso in your home don't freak out it'll still be great um, but this miso I think I just got it at Sprouts they might have it even at King Supers sometimes it comes powdered but I'm doing the liquid and so we're gonna do about two tablespoons and I'm just gonna eyeball it of the miso this is miso paste and then I'm going to do three tablespoons of tahini. Can anybody tell me what tahini is made out of? This delicious, yummy, healthy fat. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> I'm telling you, all day when I knew we were making the salad and this dressing tonight, I promise you I have been salivating. Like, I love this dressing and I love this kale salad. All right, Steve Cakes is nodding his head. Did anybody tell me no what? No responses yet. Nobody knows. Well, then I'll just tell you. It, tahini, it's basically just ground up sesame seeds. So similar to peanut butter, which would be ground up peanuts, or almond butter, which is ground up almonds. This is tahini, ground up sesame seeds. So this is an awesome brain food right here. So I'm gonna put three tablespoons of tahini I can never get enough of this stuff. Mm. Yeah, accidentally spilled that on my finger. I know how to take care of that. All right, so we're gonna put the tahini in. And also with the tahini, if you don't have that in your cupboards, not to worry, feel free to use mm -hmm. almond butter. That would be my next uh, choice going down, pardon me. And or you could use peanut butter if you wanted. I think that would make the dressing a little bit too sweet. And I won't judge you if you're still eating peanut butter, but just side note slash hip tip. So you know, farmers use peanuts typically to pull out the toxins from the soil because they're such great bottom feeders. They feed off of the toxins. So in general, we typically just don't want peanuts in our diet if you can avoid it. I won't judge you too much to your face, but uh, <laughs> actually I'd be judging myself too because we actually still do have peanut butter in the house from, uh, you know, before I learned all this yummy goodness, which is known as culinary nutrition. So if you can avoid peanuts and peanut butter, do your best. 
All right, so we got the tahini and or the almond butter in. That's three tablespoons. And then next, one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Um, it also comes in just regular sesame oil, but I like the extra oomph of the toasted. So I'm gonna do one teaspoon. And then we've got lemon juice. We're gonna use one lemon for this entire recipe. So I'm gonna use half of the lemon for the dressing and then half of the lemon for the actual kale salad. So I'm gonna cut this lemon in half. I'm using my fancy schmancy <laughs> lemon uh, squasher, but feel free to, you know, go old fashioned style, squeeze it in your hand, make sure the seeds aren't getting in, and or if you have other methods, go for it. We just want about half of a lemon and the juice in the bowl. Here we go, here we go. Now I've got Bob Marley in my head. <laughs> Could you be loved? Yes, you are. And I am loving this lemon, which is loaded with vitamin C. And I think I do this every time, but the aromatherapy, ooh, I can't get enough. <laughs> but you probably don't want to sit here watching me snip lemon, so I'll move on. Here we go. So we've got half a lemon in the dressing. Next, we've got our two cloves of garlic. I'm going to put this other half to the side, because again, we're going to use that for the actual kale. And let's see, Sheila Baker Johnson says tahini is so good. Yay! I love that you're hip to it because it's a relatively new discovery as far as cooking with it for me. So uh, relatively new, but forever best friend right now. <laughs> All right. So with our garlic cloves, we're going to take an unpeeled clove and we're just going to bam, get some of our aggression out on that garlic clove and we're going to put two in the dressing bam so we went there and now i'm going to slice the ends because nobody wants woody ends in their dressing and then we're just going to peel all the skin off so we have that beautiful glistening garlic clove Can anybody tell me just one of the many, many great benefits of garlic? I'll even throw out more. Garlic and the allium family that it is in, which includes onions and um, what's the little baby with shallots? Shallots as well. Can anybody tell me just one reason why we want this in our body? in our lives. While you're waiting for somebody to respond, yeah. Lauren just wanted to confirm, I think she reacted surprised to the peanut butter. Ah. And so she's just, so almond butter instead. I don't know if you want to just confirm that, elaborate that. And then I had a question. You used a lemon press. Did. Does it, do you want to use a fresh lemon? What are your thoughts on the lemon concentrate that comes in with that little lemon shape or the one that we get organic? Love both of those questions. And as I'm peeling this garlic, I'm noticing it's like actually five cloves instead of the two that the recipe calls for. And I'm still going for it because I just can't get enough of this yumminess. So yes, Laura, to answer your question first, and thank you for asking it by the way, um, almond butter would be an awesome substitution um, depending on what you're using it for. Like if you're a PBJ girl, then yeah, maybe you want to be in almond. Would that be, yeah, an ABJ, <laughs> almond butter and jelly sandwich girl. <laughs> but if you're also using it for toast, I know my teenagers uh, will put it on some toast. Well, actually, they're really into more of their um, avocado toast. So they'll do the avocado on the gluten-free bread. Um, but for recipes, I would really just look for whether you're going for sweet or savory. And if you're going for savory, kind of like the dressing we're making right now, I would stick with almond butter. Your body will thank you. <laughs> and then Steve takes to answer your question about the lemon juice concentrate. I appreciate you asking. If you look at the bottle on any of those concentrates, you're probably going to see the citric acid in there, which is not horrible. So it's not the worst thing, but I mean, it's not a whole food that you're getting right here. So when in doubt, I always say go for the whole food. So 
Um, we do have a bottle of that deliciousness that he's talking about in the fridge, and that's just for quick once in a while. But for the most part, we've got our whole bowl of lemons over here because I just I like the freshness, and I think we're going to get a higher dose of vitamin C by going straight to the hole. So thank you for asking. All right, let's see. So Sheila Baker Johnson says garlic gets rid of the vampires. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is my mom, and I did grow up believing in vampires because I think mom is at least she was obsessed with vampires. I don't know, mom, are you still obsessed with vampires? <laughs> but uh, sure, yes, to eat plenty of garlic to keep the vampires away. <laughs> um, other things you might say that garlic and onion and everything in the LU family is good for is that it's antiviral, which we all, I know, are glomming to right now. It is an antioxidant, so it helps our blood and our energy move a lot better through our body. Um, it's just really darn yummy. So those are my three top <laughs> uh, reasons why we want garlic in our lives. But if you Google it, you will see about probably hundreds and hundreds of other reasons why we want to get the garlic in. All right, and mom says, yes, she is still obsessed with vampires. I love it. <laughs> All right, so where are we? So we've got the miso dressing, if we have it. We've got the tahini, if we have it. Maybe we've got the almond butter in there. We've got the sesame oil. We've got the lemon juice. We've got the garlic. And now we've got, in the recipe, I said a quarter cup filtered water. But this is where we're going to eyeball it. And... This is also where you're gonna decide what is the consistency that you want. I typically like a medium consistency dressing, but if you like extra watery, put more water. If you like it kind of chunky, <laughs> like, you know, maybe like blue cheese dressing chunky, even though in culinary nutrition, we do not do blue cheese because that is dairy. That's a whole nother story. Maybe I'll do another live about dairy and the reasons why we don't put it in our body. Anyhow, <laughs> chunky, medium, or smooth. So I'm just going to eyeball. So I've got, it <laughs> actually doesn't look all that appetizing right now, but I promise it's delicious. So I'm going to start with uh, maybe a, that's a, almost a quarter, not fully a quarter cup of water. And then I'm going to put, I said, any herbs that you have. So we've got the option of if you want to put in some dill. I'm going to do parsley in mine. Um, basil's a good one, it adds a little bit of a sweetness, and again, I'm going more for savory and uh, flavor um, that we call umami. Uh, so more of that umami is what the miso brings to this, as well as the tahini. And, you know what, I think we forgot the tamari. Did I forget to put the tamari in the recipe? <laughs> I did! All right, well, while I'm chopping this gorgeous parsley, Go grab your tamari. If you have soy sauce, if you're able to tolerate wheat, grab your soy sauce. I can't tolerate wheat or gluten, so that's why I'm using the amino, liquid aminos, AKA tamari. And we're gonna put about three to four tablespoons into our dressing. And because I have like a high powered Vitamix, <laughs> Um, I'm not going to even bother chopping my herbs too much, but if you have like a regular blender and or food processor, you probably want to chop up your herbs, like bite-sized pieces before you put them in, just to make sure we get the smoothest dressing possible. Alright, so, got the herbs. Lastly, like I said, probably two to three tablespoons of tamari. Give it that saltiness, salty yumminess. And now, I'm just going to blend. You might want to mute me and or just mind the noise. Here we go.
some magic and some love. <laughs> and I think I just saw Jill P.O. Hunter popped on and said that she's obsessed. He said, we're all obsessed with my mom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Jill. It's great to see you. All right, and now's the fun part where we get to taste. We're going to just stick our finger in there and then just taste to see if it's the consistency that you like, the taste that you like. <laughs> that was really, really good. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I'd add anything to this. And you can see mine turned out this kind of green color. I know a lot of people make their green goddess recipes for dressing. Um, and again, if it's dairy free, I'm all for it. Dairy free, gluten free. If not, try this and just call it a green goddess dressing. <laughs> All right, so Steve did a up. Uh, did somebody say something fun? No, I did see Jill say that blue cheese is nasty, <laughs> which is lovely. Blue cheese is nasty. And, and Megan helped me join. Oh, hello, Megan. I saw your wishes before I, right before I turned this live, and I have to tell you, my heart swelled, especially because this kale salad was inspired by you. So, ladies and gentlemen, my teacher is here. It's such an honor to have you. Welcome. All right. So, now that we made our quote unquote green goddess dressing, <laughs> I always save my bottles. Actually, <laughs> kind of funny. Our cabinets at this point are kind of expanding. Like, maybe it's time to start recycling some of our bottles because almost all of our salad dressing bottles have been recycled. Our pickle jars have been recycled because they're just coming so ha handy and so useful and you never know when you're going to want another glass bottle. So, all that to say, this is where we will be storing our dressing for tonight in this household. And I got a funnel because I don't have a perfect pour. And again, with culinary nutrition, there's really no such thing as perfect. <laughs> the most perfect thing is that we're getting the nutrition in our bodies. That's the most perfect thing we can do. And then making the food beautiful, oh, that's just an extra. That's just a plus. All right, so there we go. We've got our delicious dressing in the bottles. I'm just gonna set this aside and let it marinate while we hop into the kale salad. All right, we'll put this, actually, put it to the side right there so that I'm not We'll just show off the camera. No, we'll just leave it right there. Okay, the fun part, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pull out our kale. So, speaking of those glass jars that I mentioned earlier, we want to store all of our veggies in glass whenever possible. Um, kale in particular, because if I were to go through all the veggies, we might be here for a while. So I'll just focus on what we've got in front of us. Kale likes to be loved by water. And we want it in glass. So for food prep, when we're bringing it home from the grocery store, preferably the organic kale. And if you have a farm and a farmer's market, plus even better, we're gonna immediately come home, we're gonna rinse it, and we're gonna put it in some kind of glass container. I think this is a ball jar with water to keep it healthy and happy. Um, so for tonight's salad, I did already wash the kale and I already chopped half of it because I had a feeling I'd be talking and talking. Um, and I want to make sure we get to eating and eating. <laughs> so you want to take the woody side off of the kale. So you just have the happy, curly, kind of let say like afro. <laughs> my my uh, kale looks like it has an afro tonight. You might have purchased or received the kale that's more long and lanky, and that works great too. But we're just going to peel off the core and feel free to dance as you do it, <laughs> sing as you do it. Let's see. And this is the part where I often like to ask my chef friends to just look away for a minute because I am not a chef. I'm a culinary nutritionist. 
key word, nutrition. So we're getting this nutrition in our body. The cuts are not going to be perfect. They're not going to be beautiful. But the way I like to do it is to cut. Well, excuse me. I grab my curly afro here. <laughs> and we're just going to cut in the most thin slices possible. And as I'm doing it, I'll show you. They come out still like bite size. And what I'm cutting right now is about two peels of the kale. Take your time with yours. Because like I said, I already cut half earlier. And while I'm cutting, and for those of you who are not necessarily cooking with me, can you tell me the benefits of kale and why our bodies get so excited and why I might be like dancing right now because <laughs> I know that this food and this nutrition will be in my body? Can anybody tell me the benefits of eating kale and not Megan? Because she taught me some of this, so <laughs> no cheating. But anybody else besides Megan? <laughs> I'm going to put this here. I'm going to clean off my cutting board as I wait. Let's see. Jill P.O. Hunter says it makes you poop. <laughs> yes! That's my girl. <laughs> It does if you eat too much, I will say that. <laughs> and actually that's an awesome point, Jill. I know you wanted me to giggle and it worked. And I will add that yes, it is loaded with fiber. And so it is really good at cleansing things out. And for those of us, I think a lot of my friends are over 40. I don't even have to tell you, you know. Anything that's gonna help us poop, <laughs> it, we're, we're gonna try it. <laughs> Hubby on the other side is like nodding his head. He's like, where is this conversation going? <laughs> <laughs> Baby, nutrition, we gotta talk about it. <laughs> so yes, loaded with fiber. So we want that, we love that. Let's see, Jill says, my kale has to be coated in a lot of stuff in order for me to eat it, but I do like it. Well then stay tuned, Jill, because you are gonna love it. I have a feeling this might be a new way to cook it for you. And hopefully a new way for you to love it. So yes, it's also filled with chlorophyll, it's filled with um, iron, we already said the fiber, it is antioxidant, and it's also filled to the brim with vitamin K, which is awesome for our bone health. And we always want to be taking care of our bones. Alright, Jill says she can't wait. Yay! Okay, well then let's get in there. So I've got my bowl full of kale. And now I'm going to sprinkle on probably about maybe like a teaspoon of sea salt. And with this sea salt, we're putting it in the kale salad up front because it's going to help to break down the cell walls. And that is going to be what helps us to digest the kale that much easier. So we've got the coarseness of the sea salt. And just a little spoiler alert, hands are going to be getting busy in a minute. So <laughs> make sure, I hope. Hopefully you cleaned your hands to begin with, but clean hands because we're going to be massaging this kale for a good three to five minutes. So the sea salt coarseness helps to break down the cell walls to make it easier to digest. And then we are going to use that other half a lemon that I told you about when we were making the dressing. And we're going to squeeze that lemon in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. More vitamin C in there and more aromatherapy, my favorite part. Love that. I'm going to put that to the side for now. So the acid from the lemon is also going to help break down those cell walls, which is also going to help it flow through our body just that much better. And the texture, you'll see. I just love the texture of the kale salad. So it doesn't taste raw. It tastes like we're, like it's cooked kale. Like we're essentially going to be cooking it while we're massaging it. So we've got the sea salt. We've got the lemon. I feel like I'm missing some. Oh, we need the oil. So I'm probably going to put about maybe a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. And olive oil, as we all know, is antioxidant. And I'm just going to double check to make sure I'm not missing anything. We got the kale. We got the lemon juice, olive oil, sea salt. And now we get to get busy. All right. So I'm coming in here for five. Well, we'll see. Let's see if I can come up with something fun to talk about for five minutes. <laughs> Might be closer to three minutes. 
But just so you know, and again, if you're cooking with me, you want to be like kneading it like dough. Like we're getting in there. We're breaking down the cell walls. We're just loving on this kale. And to look at before and after, I promise, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to talk the whole time, but it is gorgeous green. But when we get done, I'm going to show you how even more gorgeous and green this salad will be. So we're massaging. And massaging. And for those of us who have clean fingers, let's talk about gratitude. There is so much going on in this world right now. I don't have to tell you that. You know. <laughs> um, but gratitude, I always find, just brings me right back on up the vibrational scale. So if you're willing to play with me, Tell me three things you're grateful for today, like in this moment. What brings you joy? What are you grateful for? I'll start the party. I am grateful to be here with you, my community. I am grateful to have access to beautiful food because I know not everybody does have access. So I never take that for granted. I am grateful for my hubby. I'm so grateful that he is here, kind of holding my hand and helping me to set up for uh, this workshop. He's just always uh, got my back, so very grateful. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and for those of you who are cooking with me, keep going. This is gonna be a good, like, upper arm workout <laughs> and finger workout, but just keep kneading. Let's see, Sheila Baker Johnson says vitamin C. Yes, we've got the vitamin C in the lemon. I think we might even have vitamin C in the kale. And so we're getting double dose of vitamin C with the dressing and with the kale tonight. Let's see, Sheila Baker Johnson, her three things she's grateful for. Michelle, Andrea, Michael, love it. Shout out to my brother and sister. Wait, let's see on um, Instagram. Um, so Jill's asking, can you do it without the lemon juice or replace it with something else? Yeah, I mean, you can do it absolutely without the lemon juice. I think as long as you have the olive oil and the sea salt, that will help break down the cells. And then of course this motion of the massage is breaking down the cell walls. So yeah, that would be great. You'll still get this gorgeous texture. And then Jill says, for, she's grateful for having me as a friend for so long. Oh my gosh. Yes. Amen, sister. And my kiddos and my sassy husband. <laughs> yes, your sassy husband who I have yet to meet. Darn COVID. As soon as uh, this pandemic's over, it's on. We will be having family barbecues. No doubt. Oh, and then I'll bring this kale salad. <laughs> or I should say make it. We'll have you guys over. I will come see you. Let's see. Awesome hearts. Love it. Looks like we have about one more minute, but let me tell you, this is like not necessarily the spa. I wouldn't go there because I'd, I'd much rather have somebody else massaging me, but something spa like just having your hands in nature. Uh, for those of you who are also gardeners, you know what I mean? Like it just feels good to have your hand in the dirt, in the lovely kale. And it's just magical. That's why it's called Magical Kale Salad. So I'm going to keep going. Maybe 30 more seconds. Let's see. <laughs> Jill says, damn straight. That's right. We're hooking it up. <laughs> Barbecue right around the corner. Gotta keep looking towards the future. And still being very joyful in the present. And that's my goal at least. I think that's why they call it practice. Mindfulness is a practice. So it's a daily practice for me to stay present in the moment. All right, well speaking of this moment, this kale is shining and happy and glistening look at that all right i'm going to now tip the bowl so you'll see after massaging it it looks like it went down about half the way 
just as it would like if we steamed it, you know, how it often wilts. But it's also like just so gorgeous and dark green. Look at all that chlorophyll saying, I want to nourish you. I want to love you. <laughs> yes. So we've got the massage done. So now let's add the toppings. All right, we have got one avocado. Let's see which one. With avocados, you wanna, obviously you don't want them too soft because they'll be mushy, but you don't want them too hard because they give me tummy aches and they're just not good. So I think this one is just right. Got a few more pieces of kale in my hands. So I'm going to slice the avocado in half. And let's see. I'm gonna be lucky tonight. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look how beautiful this avocado is. And I'm holding it here, which looks a little obscene, but I should really hold it up here because I'm telling you, this is one of the healthiest fats in the world for our brain. This is excellent brain food. So to get the pit of the avocado out, fun trick I actually learned from my hubby. I'm just gonna make a cross on the pit and then wiggle wiggle and then it comes out just like that. And I'll put that there and then for the avocado topping we are gonna make cubes. So I'm going long way and then I'm gonna go wide to make the cubes. Oh yeah, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. This avocado is here for it. It's here for the magical kale salad potter. All right. So we've got an entire avocado. Beautiful, healthy, Rain nourishing fat going in. We got one. And just in case you missed it, my lines again, they're not perfect, but this nutrition, it's coming in. <laughs> it's getting in there. Right. Great. Next, we got half a cup of walnuts. Um, and you can use any nuts, really. I think pecans would be good in this salad. Uh, sliver of almonds, if you have those, that would be amazing. And speaking of brain, walnuts actually look kind of similar to the way our brains are designed. So I think that's nature's little wink wink, as in eat this, keep a healthy brain. So we're just gonna chop it. And again, chef friends, look away. I know this is not proper chef, te chef technique, but it's the way I get it done. Yeah, knock on wood. No, uh, nothing's been cut or hurt before, so, so far, so good. <laughs> Let's see. Chop it, chop it. Chop it, chop it. Yes. Donna Marie. Smith, Jimmy. Oh, Donna Marie, welcome from New York. Good to see you and have you in my kitchen. And Coach Smith, or yeah, Kim, Coach Kim. You know I always love your energy. And, side note, our conversation in Clubhouse uh, the other day, it actually got me thinking about some things. And, oh, and I even updated my front page after a comment that you made, so thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being a part of my community. All right, so we've got the walnuts, we've got the avocados, now we've got the quarter cup sun-dried tomatoes. Now, these are excellent for uh, vitamin C and health for all of us, but this question will be easier. A or B? Female, A, B, male. Who are they actually really beneficial for? Do you think sun-dried tomatoes are more beneficial for the goose or the gander. <laughs> and as you're thinking, and as I'm chopping, because my sun-dried tomato, they all came maybe like that size. And I want them a little bit smaller just for bite size. 
And again, flip away because I know, I know already, this is not the way a proper chef would be chopping their sun-dried tomatoes, but it's working and it's getting in. Okay, so who benefits more from sun-dried tomatoes? Males or females? Let's see, Angeline Mains on Facebook. Hello, welcome. You said breaking down the cell walls. Yes, that is what the sea salt does and the lemon juice in the kale. And that, and we want it to break down the kale cell walls to make it easier to digest. All right, is anybody gonna be brave? The goose or the animal? I'll send more. Good job, good job. Yes, so any uh, cooked or concentrated tomato is gonna be excellent for our male friends' prostates. So again, the nutrition, we wanna get it in. This is still very healthy and high in vitamin C for women, but it's really, really, really good for our men. So putting that on top of the salad. And now, in my house, it depends on my mood. Like, well, <laughs> I say my mood. It's really my family's mood. Uh, half of us do not care for capers. And so I use pumpkin seeds, which are super high in iron and manganese. Another great brain food. Um, but the recipe actually calls for capers, and I love the saltiness and the texture. And so the kid that doesn't love capers isn't with us this evening, so they're going in. <laughs> and what I love about this salad is we've got the saltiness from the capers, the sweetness from the sun-dried tomatoes, and just the all-around yumminess from the kale. So now that we've got it in there, actually let me clean off my cooking board. We're just gonna mix it all together. And what I love about the fact that we already put the olive oil in with the kale, all of these pieces like hold together. Like this is not one of those salads where, you know, you mix it together and then all the good stuff is at the very bottom. Yeah. These cell walls are holding tight to all these additional yummy pieces. So we're just gonna lightly toss it. Put this to the side. Make it a little bit prettier. Move things around. And there we go. We've got our magical kale salad. So I truly hope you enjoy this one. You can have it as a side. We're gonna have it as a side tonight because even though we do eat plant-based here in our home. We still enjoy meat protein. It, uh, it is a choice and it also just helps to keep my energy up and most of my family members' energy up as well. Um, but if you wanna go straight vegetarian and this could be a full meal for you, of course I'm gonna support you and love on you for that and your body will love you for that as well. Um, and then again, a lovely salad dressing. Put on as much or as little as you want because as you saw, all the ingredients are very healthy for our bodies, for our energies, our energy, and to balance our moods. All right, are there any questions before I move on? And while you're thinking of any questions, I'll just give you a heads up. A few events I have coming up uh, next Thursday. I'll be cooking with AARP, which will be really fun. It's uh, April Fool's Day, so I decided to do breakfast for dinner. So that should be fun. Go to my page, michellefox.com forward slash events if you want to sign up. It is free for my friends, and you do not have to be over 50 to participate. And then I have a few other events on the page if you want to join. Uh, it's always more fun to cook with my community. So let's see if there are no more questions, then I think that's it. Bon appetit. Thank you again for having me in your home, hopefully in your kitchen, and DM me if you have any questions about any of this, the nutrition, the recipes, events. I am always, always, always happy to help. All my love. I will see you on the other side. Oh,
properly. Um, but I just have it for phone. Thank you, love. All right. Just stop this. <laughs>